So in this video, we're going to look at the quadratic formula, and we'll do example one, two, three, and four. Okay, so the quadratic formula says that if we have ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, then we can find the value for x with this formula. x is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so... Um, don't be afraid to write that down. So press pause and write that down. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c and the whole thing, the whole thing over 2a. So make sure your uh, fraction bar goes all the way over the whole thing. Make sure, make sure you plug in plus or minus and this square root sign goes all the way over as far as c. Okay. Anyway, that's the quadratic formula, and it is, you know, you, you will see it from now on in this class and, and in other math classes, later math classes. It's a common formula for solving any quadratic equation. It doesn't matter what, what the quadratic equation is. So we'll do example one, x squared plus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. Now, first of all, let's solve that by factoring. We're, we know how to solve by factoring, and I've picked an easy example um, to begin with. But the next example, just so you know, is is you won't be able to solve this by factoring. Okay, So example two, we can solve by factoring anyway. And I'm just going to do example one because I want to prove to you that this formula does indeed work. And example two, you won't be able to solve it by factoring anyway. So then you'll appreciate the formula in example two. So please bear with me for example one. We'll just use it as a, a proof and a practice of the formula. So, you know, if I solve this by factoring, it would be the short method, wouldn't it? And what two numbers multiply to six and add to five? Positive two and positive three. Okay, so I have this factor times this factor is equal to zero, so it's like a times b is zero. So that means either this one has to be zero, or this one has to be zero. And then I solve this equation, subtract two from both sides, and I have x is negative two, or, and solve this equation, subtract three from both sides, and I have um, x equals negative three. So x is negative two or negative three, and that works. That's the correct answer, right? If you check it, you'll find that works. So that's solving by factoring. Now we're just going to take this simple example and solve it with the formula just so we can prove that the formula does indeed work. So it says that if ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then x is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Hmm. Okay, so what is the value of a? A is the coefficient of x squared. What's the coefficient of x squared? It's 1, isn't it? So we have A is equal to 1. Okay. What is the coefficient of x? It's 5. So B is equal to 5, the coefficient of x. And this constant term at the end is 6. So the constant term C is equal to 6. Right? So now x equals, sorry, equals negative b. Now, instead of writing b, I'm going to write parentheses. Negative b plus or minus, and I like you to do the same. And b squared, right, you know, parentheses squared. Uh, minus 4 times a times c, parentheses, parentheses, all over 2 times a. So I hope you have... Um, being shown that the best way to, when we need to substitute numbers in for variables, the best thing to do is, is write parentheses where the letters go. You should always think of letters as it's like a box. It's a parenthesis, okay? And it's ready for numbers to be plugged into it so you can calculate things, right? So in any case, um, B is 5. So we can plug 5 here. And where else can we plug 5? B5 is B squared here. So B is here and here. A is 1. Where does A go in the formula? Go here. And here. And where does C go in the formula? 
goes here, right? So now we're ready to calculate this. Now we've already practiced these, which is great. So we, we hopefully we'll be we'll be good at this. And the best way to calculate this formula is to um, work with the square root first. That gives us the square root of now five squared is twenty five. Net minus four times one, okay, gives me a negative four, and then I need to multiply that by six. So I have the square root of twenty-five minus twenty-four, right? Which is the square root of one, which is one. Okay. So this whole fraction becomes negative five plus or minus. Now this whole square root. This whole square root just became the number 1, didn't it? And that's all over 2 times 1, which is 2. Now, we have to deal with what plus or minus means. Plus or minus means it's this expression with a plus in it, or the same expression with a minus. It's plus or minus. So we have negative 5 plus 1 over 2 or negative 5 minus 1 over 2. That's what plus or minus means. So we got to, it, this gets, becomes two separate fractions now, doesn't it? Of course, we could have split it up at the beginning and wrote all this with a plus and all of this with a minus, but I mean, it's a lot of writing. I guess I just like to split it up at this point because this is where I'm ready to deal with it. This is where, it just less less ink, basically. So at this point, we have negative 5 plus 1 gives me negative 4 over 2. And if I calculate that, I get negative 2. And negative 5 minus 1 over 2, in debt $5, subtract $1, that's negative 6 over 2, which gives negative 3. So my answer is negative 2 or negative 3. Now the formula said, of course, that x equals this. So, you know, we could have written x equals this, and then x equals this or this, and then eventually x equals, you know, you'd have x equals negative 2 or negative 3, and that's your final answer, right? And I guess in the text it might be written, you know, x equals negative 2, comma, x equals negative 3, two solutions. And of course, that agreed with the solutions we found when we solved by factoring. We found, when we solved by factoring, we also found x is negative 2 or negative 3. So hopefully, you believe the formula does indeed work, at least. And of course, we should also check it in the original equation, which I'm not going to check this one exactly, but we might check um, one or two of the examples we do in this video. So this one is x squared plus 7x is equal to negative 4. Now, what is your value of a, b, and c? Write down what your value of a, b, and c is so you can use the quadratic formula. If ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So I'm kind of asking you a trick question there. The common mistake on this is to say that a is the coefficient of x squared, a is 1, b is the coefficient of x, b is 7, and c is the constant, c is negative 4. I made a mistake. What's my mistake? This is a mistake. Can you see the mistake here? This is wrong. c is not negative 4. c is positive 4. Why is c positive 4? Do you know? Because we have to have ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0 on the right-hand side. We have to have 0 on the right-hand side. So the first step for all of these things has to be get 0 on the right-hand side. And the second step is, is um, use the formula, right? and keep going. So we need to get 0 on the right hand side, so we do not have 0 on the right hand side. So how about add 4 to both sides? Now we do. So we have, you know, x squared plus 7x plus 4 is equal to 0. Um, and we can now give the value of a, b, and c. 
A is 1, B is 7, C is 4. Now, another common error people make at this point is they might write 1x squared plus 4 plus 7x equals 0, and they'll say A is 1, B is 4, and C is 7, and you can see the problem there, right? You need to have your x term in the middle. Your x squared it has to be an x squared term on the left, you know, an x term in the middle, and then a constant term on the right. So this is obviously wrong with the B and C. Anyway, so obviously we should have this. 1x squared plus 7x plus 4 equals uh, 0. And so once again, our A is 1, B is 7. And I always write this down, just like it's done in the video. If you just follow every question like you're shown in the video, it should save you time because I've done these problems a thousand times over and so I've come up with some efficient ways of laying out the problem and not making a mistake, okay? I hope anyway. So the formula says that x is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Make sure your square root went over, your, your fraction bar went over everything all the way up to here. Okay, fraction bar goes up to here. And uh, press pause and make sure you have this with the parentheses. Okay. Now, now see, press pause and see if you can plug the variables in where they should go, the numbers. Where should the numbers go in here? Press pause and try it. Okay, now I'll try it. Now, A is 1, and A goes here and here. So I should stick 1, sorry, um, here and here. B is 7, uh, so B should go here and here and C is 4, so C should go here. Does that make sense? So now I just need to calculate the square root. And we've had practice with this, so hopefully we can do it. So press pause and try and do this yourself. And then, you know, skip through the video and see if you got the right answer. Okay, now I'll try it. So I'll get the square root of this. I'll calculate the square root. And it's the square root of now 7 squared is 49. Negative 4 times 1 is minus 4 and then times 4 again. So I've got the square root of 49 minus 16. That gives me the square root of 33, I'm pretty sure. And if I plug through 33 into the calculator, I'm going to give it four decimal places just so I don't make a mistake when I'm rounding and stuff. So second square root of 33 5.74456, so I'm going to round that to 5.7446, 5.7446, so this whole square root became 5.7446, and there's a plus or minus here, and negative 7, of course, is just, that's just negative 7, plus or minus that all over 2 times 1 is just 2. And now I just need, need to deal with the plus or minus symbol, okay? So plus or minus, that means we have all of this with a plus or this fraction with a minus sign. So it's negative 7 plus 5.7446 over 2 or negative 7 minus 5.7446 all over 2. And we calculate each one in turn, right? So we can do that in the calculator. I'll just go, um, well, you know what you could do is, this was the square root of 33, so you could actually just write negative 7 minus the square root of 33. That might be the best thing to do. Sorry. I'll put in a plus to begin with. Plus, so negative 7 plus square root of 33 gives me that. Uh, negative 1.2554 all over 2. So then just, you know, divide this by 2. Just hit divide, 2, enter. And you get negative 
zero point six two eight to three decimal places. Okay, and this one would be um, negative seven minus square root of thirty three negative twelve point seven four um, four five six and so on all over two so then divide that by two just hit divide by two and we get negative six point three seven uh, two so the two solutions should be this or this x equals this number or this number two solutions okay now I just want to show you one thing on the calculator this was um, yeah what we were calculating was say negative 7 plus root 33 over 2 if you do this there's two ways there's a, a wrong way to do this in the calculator if you type negative 7 plus root 33 over 2 and press enter this will give you the wrong answer do you, do you, do you know why if you think about the order of operations PEMDAS it says we need to do we have a we need to do you know addition so it says we need to do division first and then addition if you just type this in the calculator it'll just divide these guys and then add on negative seven but you don't want that you, you want to add these two together first and then divide the whole thing by two which means you must put in parentheses so you must type in parentheses negative seven plus root of um, 33 and that's another parenthesis and then close that parenthesis and then divide by two so if you can do this in the calculator put in parentheses here and here and also have parentheses for the root and then divide by two and get the right answer that's well and good otherwise I suggest you just do it step by step and get the correct answer step by step like this okay so I don't suggest that you uh, do this in the calculator because at this point for some reason in Math 65 most people make a mistake and, and if you can already do it this way you might as well do it this way and not make a mistake okay there'll be plenty of opportunities to uh, use your calculator so anyway later on so anyway let's look at example 3 we have 2x squared equals 3x minus 6 so press pause and find the value of a b and c the quadratic formula is this okay and now a b and c just so you know a is 2 b is negative 3 and c is negative 6 did you get that it's not positive 3 and positive 6 we have to have 0 on the right hand side if we want to use the formula so the first step has to be get 0 on the right hand side so let's subtract 3x from both sides first of all and we have 2x squared minus 3x is equal to 6 now we need to subtract 6 from both sides so we'll have 2x squared minus 3x minus 6 is equal to 0 Okay. now we can write down the value of a b and c okay a is 2 b is negative 3 c is negative 6 so now you can use your formula and the formula is um, I guess I'll do it here x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a c and the whole thing over 2 times a okay so once again this fraction bar extends all the way over and now you plug in your values of a b and c so where does a go a goes here and here b b is negative 3 so b goes where B goes here, doesn't it? And where else? Here. And C is negative 6, and negative 6 goes here, right? So now we calculate the square root, and uh, let's calculate the fraction, and I always like to start with the square root, because it, it's easier to do, it's less ink. 
negative 3 all squared is a negative 3 times a negative 3, which is a positive 9. Okay, then look at this. Negative 4 times positive 2. What does that give? Negative 4 times positive 2? Negative 8. And then we multiply by negative 6, right? So this is positive 9. Now, negative 8 times negative 6 is plus 48. And if I add these guys together, I get 57. So the square root of 57, let's calculate that. Um, plug it in the calculator, and I, I like to give it four decimal places. 7.5498, uh, right? Approximately. 7.5498, and we have negative negative 3 is a positive 3, isn't it? Plus or minus this all over, what's 2 times 2? 4, okay? And then we deal with this fraction, and we've got to think about the plus or the minus, or minus part, right? Plus or minus. This means that we're going to have this fraction with a plus in it, or this fraction with a minus sign in it, plus or minus. So we're going to have 3 plus 7.5498 all over 4, or 3 minus 7.5498 all over 4. And I, I advise you just to calculate these things one at a time, you know, step by step with with the decimals in there. So, you know, this would be 10.5498 all over 4, or this one, which would be negative 4.5498 all over 4. And you can plug this in the calculator to find that, and then just divide each one in turn, right? So let's see, 10.5498 over 4, 2.637, to three decimal places we've got 2.637 here, or, and this is um, negative 4.5498, negative 4.5498, Divide that by 4, negative 1.137. Okay, so what we find is that eventually, so we started with, you know, the example started up here. We had 2x squared equals 3x plus 6, and we got 0 on the right hand side. We used the quadratic formula. And we used the formula, eventually we found these irrational numbers, so we found that x is equal to this or this. Now, once again, we could not have solved this guy by factoring, because if you tried to solve this by factoring, you would have went 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, and look, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. What two numbers now can you get to add to negative 3? and multiply to negative 12. Can you find two numbers that add to negative 3 and multiply to negative 12? There are none. This You cannot factor this because the answers are not integers or, or sorry, rational numbers. They're not fractions like the answer isn't a half and three quarters or something. The answer are these crazy irrational numbers. And so it, these are the type of equations that we can solve now with the quadratic formula. Okay, So the factoring method only worked when we had these nice integer and fraction answers, these nice rational um, answers. But when we have irrational answers, these never-ending decimals, then we have to use the quadratic formula. So we've expanded our um, repertoire now, we've expanded our skill base. And we can also check the answer, the answers here. So the original equation was 2x squared equals 3x plus 6. So if I check the original equation, 2 times something squared should equal to 
the the number plus six and I'm going to check it for both so two times the number squared equals three times x plus six so I'll plug in you know 2.637 first of all and check this equation and then plug in the other solution so there's supposed to be two solutions to solutions to this one sorry three seven and I can just go ahead and check that in the calculator so whoops two times two point six three seven and that squared gives me thirteen point nine approximately and then on the other side I have three times uh, two point six three seven and then plus six and that again is you know approximately the same thing 13.9 these aren't exactly the same 13.9 numbers but that's because we had we rounded this x value here is rounded to the, to the nearest thousand rounded to three decimal places so this one works out this answer is correct here this x is correct and now we're just going to check this x so if I go 2 times negative uh, 1.137 and then square that I get 2.585 and so on so you know 2.585 um, blah 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 and then check this one 3 times negative uh, 1.137 um, plus 6 and 2.58 and so on, 2.589 and so on. Okay, so in any case, this one checked out as well. So we've just checked both our answers and they're both correct. That's a good thing. Okay, so this is how you check your answer. Just plug it into the original equation. Why did I plug it into the very first equation and why couldn't I plug it in here? Well, you can plug it in here, but what if you made a mistake along the way then you're not checking the right question and then your answers may be, you know. So you always plug it in at the very beginning to make sure it works for the very first equation you were given in the question itself, okay? So I'm going to press pause and let you do example four by yourself. I mean, you can press pause and do example four by yourself now. And just so you know, the answer to this should be no real number solution. No real number solution, right? Okay, so I'm going to do it now. Um, we're solving with the quadratic formula. And if I use the quadratic formula, I need to get the values of A, B, and C. So what I need to do to begin with is get zero on the right-hand side. So how about add three to both sides? And now I have negative x plus 3 over here equals negative 7x squared. And then I can add 7x squared to both sides. And if I write this with the x squared first and then the x term and then the number, I'll have 7x squared minus x plus 3 is equal to 0. And now I can write down the values of a, b, and C. So press pause and write down the values of A, B, and C. So A is always the coefficient of x squared. A is 7. B is always the coefficient of x. We have negative x. That's, of course, negative 1x. So B is negative 1, and C is the constant term. C is 3. And my formula is always x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And the whole thing over 2a. So b is negative 1, plug negative 1 in here and here. Uh, a is 7, 7 goes here and here. c is 3, 3 goes there. And then calculate the square root by itself. That's what I like to start with anyway. And this gives me the square root of, now negative 1 all squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. Then I have a negative 4 times 7, that's a negative 28 times 3. So it's the square root of 1 minus um, 24 and uh, 60, 1 minus 84, isn't it? Right? Which is the square root of negative 83. Plug that in the calculator, what do you get? 
We should know this by now anyway, but the square root of negative 83, of course, it says error, non-real answer, error, non-real answer. In other words, you cannot get the square root of a negative number, can you? If the negative is inside the square root, this is a no real number. There's no solution. So what we have is, if you want to be, we have negative negative 1, positive 1, plus or minus no real number. As this thing became no real number, didn't it? All over 14. Now, hold on a second. How do you take a no real number, nothing, impossible, no number, add it to 1, or go 1 plus or minus that, and then divide by 14? Well, you can't. This whole thing, of course, is no real number. So we simply have x equals no real number right so the answer is there's no real number solution there's no solution no real number solution there is no solution okay and um, so you can always tell that whenever this square root turns out to be a negative there will be a, the answer is there's no solution no real number solution right